both our shoulder and our hip joints are made of a ball and socket joint that move with a ball inside of a socket all the way through. Sadly, we only use about 50% of our available range of motion, so when we go to do activities, we often find strain and discomfort near our end ranges. These next two activities are gonna help you explore some of the end ranges in both your shoulder and your hip to improve mobility and stability. Be gentle with yourself, only go to the comfortable ranges and stay within your tolerance. So we're gonna take this two pound ball, you can use a box set of DVDs, a can of pasta sauce, whatever you got on hand to move through this range of motion. We're gonna come on to all fours here Hips are, knees are stacked underneath our hips, and we have one hand firmly on the ground. So we're gonna take the object in our hand. We're gonna turn our palm towards the ceiling, and we're gonna bring it back towards our hip. We're gonna raise that hand up as far as we can. We're gonna bring our elbow back towards our head, keeping our palm up before we turn and serve forward. Bringing the elbow down, turning the palm in towards our body, and lifting the arm up, arm up, elbow towards your head, turn your arm around, keeping your palm towards the ceiling. For an added bonus in this position, we can take our palm up towards the ceiling, bring this here, place it onto our low back, if it doesn't roll off. So careful if you're using a can of pasta sauce. Bring that hand down to grab with your other hand. Palm stays facing the ceiling. Elbow up towards your head. Turning the arm around to serve forward. This functional movement pulls our arm through all of its ranges while coordinating and challenging our core stability as well. For this hip mobility routine, we're gonna start on all fours. We're gonna press hard into our right hand and our left knee to support our torso. We're gonna lift up this right knee and we're gonna trace a square. So we're gonna come starting at, the, the square starts at the inside left, and we're gonna open to the right. We're gonna push it back and bring it over and back in. So as we press open, back, across, down. So this is point one of our square. We're gonna open up to two. Press it back to three, cross to four, and back down to one. Your knee doesn't change the amount of bend in it. You're just rounding through the hip joint these ranges of motion. So you notice that my back doesn't round as my knee opens, presses out, or comes back. As you move through these ranges, you can start to round the corners to get a more fluid movement. Keep pressing into your diagonal hand and knee to keep the torso lifted and supported so that you're not dropping your back into the floor and wiggling your whole pelvis. This is limited to just the leg bones circling through the hip joint in that ball and socket. We can go the other direction. So if we start with our square at point one, we'll drop down, crossed, up, in. These corners can be rounded to experience a more fluid range. 